Hi, my name is Tyler Hatch, and I'm a supervising engineer in the Sustainable Groundwater Management Office at the California Department of Water Resources. In thinking about the uh, today's topic for the drought prediction and priorities focusing on groundwater, I will provide an overview of some groundwater efforts managed by the state of California, starting with an overview of the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act and then talking about several data sets and tools we have and how they might be able to support drought prediction and planning. As of 2015, the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, or SIGMA as we call it, provides the statutory requirements for groundwater management across the state of California. The central tenet of SIGMA is that groundwater management is best accomplished locally due to the size and diversity of conditions across the state. SIGMA defines local public agencies called groundwater sustainability agencies who are responsible for the development and implementation of a groundwater sustainability plan to achieve locally defined sustainable groundwater conditions. The state has oversight roles to provide regulatory review, technical and financial assistance, as well as enforcement when local agencies are unable to meet the minimum standards identified by SIGMA. The entire process is stakeholder driven and highly encourages public participation to help guide sustainable groundwater management. Sustainability is defined as the avoidance of locally defined undesirable results for six sustainability indicators, lowering of groundwater levels, reduction of storage, seawater intrusion, degraded water quality, land subsidence, and depletion of interconnected surface water. Sigma applied to all alluvial groundwater basins in the state as defined by California DWR Bulletin 118. However, the statutory deadlines for reaching sustainability only apply to a subset of groundwater basins prioritized as high or medium priority. Of the high and medium priority basins, those designated in Bulletin 118 to be in a condition of critical overdraft were required to submit groundwater sustainability plans by 2020 and become sustainable by 2040, whereas the rest of the high and medium priority basins were required to submit groundwater sustainability plans by 2022 and become sustainable by 2042. The Department of Water Resources maintains a database of periodic groundwater level measurements. These can be used to identify long-term trends in water levels, such as you can see here on the left from fall of 2012 to fall of 2017. And these trends can be used to identify things in the context of drought that might need to uh, have additional resources at the local level. On the right, we have the dry well database, which is a public interface where anybody can go and report dry wells. And this has been a really useful asset that started in the last uh, portion of the drought back in 2012 to 2014, where people are, were able to go and identify for the state so that we could deploy resources for uh, drought uh, response related to those dry wells. Some of the data challenges we have are related to groundwater pumping rates and locations, limited knowledge about fractured rock groundwater use outside of the state defined alluvial basins, and data gaps in other areas of the water budget that relate to groundwater, such as land use and stream flow. We have here a depiction of a, the spatial distribution of irrigation wells, as well as the number of installations per year since uh, about 1977. And you can see a notable uptick in the installations of those wells during drought periods. The department also maintains several groundwater surface water modeling tools, the California Central Valley Groundwater Surface Water Simulation Model that my team maintains, as well as the Sacramento Valley Surface Water Groundwater Simulation Model, SVSIM. And we also partner with the USGS California Water Science Center to work closely with their Central Valley model CVHM2 and help align and uh, compare the input data between those models to make it most useful for the public. Two areas where dr models can help us related to drought are in understanding stream depletion and where impacts might occur related to increased groundwater pumping and interconnected systems such as uh, how the depletion is distributed and how long the depletion will take to occur. And the other thing 
is land subsidence, and we can look at how drought might affect the critical infrastructure due to subsidence and how long land, inelastic land subsidence can continue as a result of the drought. Thank you, and I'd be happy to answer any questions.